It's time to build the system with the newly released RTX 47 DTI Super. You will not be disappointed with today's build's performance. It's gonna be rocking a green and black colorway. Bro, I need to get in here, man, for real. Yeah, that's right! Yo, 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 what up guys? Hope all is well. I'm Inti for Crater, and today we're gonna be building a 47 ETI Super Build, and we're gonna be pairing it with an AMD CPU once again. This is a complete build guide, and it's beginner friendly, so I don't care if you've never built a PC before, you've come to the right place. Here on the channel, we've worked with a wide variety of budgets, so if your budget is a bit higher or a bit lower, go ahead and check out the channel for the previous build guides we've done. If you don't fancy this one, I'm sure you'll find one on the channel. All right, guys, well, first we're gonna go over all the parts and their prices while we pick them. Second, we're then going to go over the build guide i'm gonna teach you guys everything don't worry you got this and then third at the very end the fun part we're gonna put this build to the test against all current popular titles esports and triple a's that's always a blast it's a benchmarking montage at the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned for that okay before we jump into it i just want to announce that all creator tees are currently on sale on creatorhq.com go check it out Let's begin. So first, the 4070 Ti that we chose, we went with the Zotac Gaming 4070 Ti Super. This is the Trinity Black Edition. And let's get this open. I wanna check it out already. So we've done a build with the 4070 Super. If you're interested in that one, that one ran us $1,400. But here's our 4070 Ti Super. Boom. It is a two slot card. The video ports, one HDMI port, three display ports, nice backplate, metal. The side of the card does light up. You can customize this by the way, it's RGB. This is the 40 series card, which is using the new plug for the power three fan design and yeah beautiful card guys can't wait to game on it now inside of here it does come with a gpu support we'll use that why not it comes with the adapter which plugs in here and then we're able to use our traditional power plugs for our gpu we're not going to be using this though because this will be on display in the front of the build it looks ugly we're going to be using one of our crater branded cables these are longer and it's going to be on display in the front of our build like this with the cable ties which is going to be a lot cleaner than this on display with the bulky cables just hanging all over the place in the front of our build. You'll see what I'm talking about. By the way, you can pick this cable up on our website, creatorhq.com. Every single part used for this build is linked in the video's description. The CPU. We just used the CPU for the last build guide. This is the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. My personal favorite CPU. AMD 3D CPUs are super good for gaming. They help our graphics card run at 99% utilization, which is something you always want. You want to get all the lemon juice out of your lemon, this graphics card. I like to play Warzone 2 a lot, so whatever graphics card I'm using, why not get all the power out of it? This will help you achieve that. AMD 3D CPUs, so good for gaming. I love them. The motherboard we're going with. This is an Aorus branded board, the B650 Aorus Elite AX. Has built-in Wi-Fi, has built-in Bluetooth. It's a good price. A lot of M.2 slots as well. Let me show you guys how it looks. Here it is. It's a beautiful board. Good board. We've used it before in previous builds, guys. We're using it again because it's good. So if you're going to be using Wi-Fi, get the Wi-Fi antenna out of the motherboard box. We got the JFP1 tool out of the motherboard box. For the RAM, 32 gigabytes. 6000 DDR5, the Flare X5 from G Skill. Great RAM, performs good, price is right. For the storage, boom, our go to WD Blue 1 terabyte M.2 SSD, speedy storage at a great price. And we need to go over what's gonna cool our Ryzen. I am a fan of this deep cool heatsink. This is an even beefier one than we've used in the previous build guide. It has two fans on this guy. It's gonna keep our 3D CPU nice and cool. It's gonna get the job done at a good price. And I like the way it looks too, looks clean in there. Looks beefy. The juice, what's gonna power everything? You don't need 850 watts. You can use a 750 watt power supply, but because this is a more uppity system, I wanted to just future-proof it more, have it be all good in the neighborhood. So this is an 850 gold rated power supply by Cooler Master. This is their MWE Gold 850 V2 fully modular power supply. Fully modular means none of the cables are connected to it. So we're only gonna connect the cables that we need, which means easier cable management inside of our build. So now we arrive at the case. What case are we using for this build? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, a new case, guys. This is a Thermaltake case. There is the title. It's an ATX case. It looks sick. Let me just open it and you will be the judge yourself. Why is it special? Because it comes in a sick green colorway. It's called their matcha green colorway. I love matcha. Who doesn't love matcha? The PC gaming market does not have cases that are rainbow colors. It's always black. They don't even really do red anymore. What the fudge nuggets is up with that? This one is green, baby. All right, guys. So for the price, what do we get? We get pre-installed fans. Uh -huh. We get two big old RGB LED fans. They light up in the front. Another fan in the back. That one doesn't light up. High quality. 
The aesthetics of this case are beautiful. It doesn't just end with the color. Look at the design we have here. Plenty of airflow in the front. Oh, beautiful case, guys. Beautiful. So sick, so sick. Let's get the panels off. I wanna see the inside more. So inside it's all black for the most part, clean. It looks like the standoffs are already gonna be in the position we need them to be in too. Let's go ahead and uh, get this toolbox out. Might as well. So all the screws we need are in here. We'll open that later. Okay, so that concludes our essential parts list. Here's the total price. Now we're gonna be moving on to the optional components. This is purely for aesthetics. We're gonna be using our custom sleeve power supply extension cables. As you can see, this is in the green, gray, and black colorway. It's gonna be in display in the front of our build. It's gonna look super sick. Versus the stock ugly cables from the power supply. Our Crater RGB LED strip kit comes with two strips, strong magnetic attachments, the cables we need to connect it to the motherboard. You can pick these up on our site, craterhq.com, every single part linked in the video description. And and the fungal pop of choice. We bought more than we needed for this one. We bought the whole gang. Raphael, Mikey, Donatello, and Leonardo. Which one is your favorite turtle? Comment down below. This is an Amazon exclusive and it glows in the dark. We're only gonna put one of these. I believe we're going to have to put Mikey. I like Leonardo and I like Donatello for the most. We're gonna put Mikey in there still though. Time to build this guy and then we're gonna frag it up at the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned for that and then we'll really know how good this thing performs. Also, feel free to follow us on Instagram at Crater builds also TikTok at crater builds all right guys first we're gonna install our cpu inside of our cpu socket on our motherboard let's open it up you guys gonna be a little more cautious with your parts okay so first thing we want to do is we're going to get this lever and pull it to the side lift this all the way up then we're gonna lift this all the way up to reveal our cpu socket if you take a close look at our cpu socket you're gonna find an arrow right there on the top left side the cpu socket and when we take a look at our ryzen cpu you will see that there's an arrow on the top left side of it so we're gonna line up the arrow of the cpu with the arrow on the cpu socket so we're just gonna hover right over and let it drop right into place and it should look like that guys now we can bring this back down and make sure that this metal part right here is on top of this so it can hold it down and we're gonna put Push this down. You're going to feel a little bit of tension. That's fine. And tuck it in. This will come off. So now our CPU is in. Now let's install the CPU cooler. So I'm going to get this open. It comes with its own screwdriver. I'm going to be using mine. What we're going to get out of the box is the fans and the heatsink, the thermal paste, this bag with four thumb screws. Then there is two more bags. One of them is for Intel CPUs, which is this one. This is the AMD one. You know it's the AMD one because you will find some more screws in here with black rubber on the bottom of them. This is all we're using. First, we're going to unscrew these and remove them. Now let's get this out of the bag. And we're going to screw the rubber part down onto the four points. There is one and the remaining three. Third one. And I'm just gonna try to screw them as much as I can with my hands. Now we need to put these. It tells us what position they're supposed to go, right? So CPU with the arrow, as in this arrow needs to be pointing towards the CPU and we're going to put it right in. Same thing for this one. CPU arrow facing down onto the CPU. Looking good. Now the four thumb screws. And it should look like that. All right, guys. So now this heatsink is going to be installed on top of here like this. But let's go ahead and remove the fans by pulling up on this. Just comes right off. And now the second one in the middle right here. Pull up. Turn it around. Pull up. Remove this second fan. Slides right off. So now we have a better look. These two screws are going to screw in to here. It's going to go right on top like this. So first what we're going to do is we're going to apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste in the middle of the CPU. So we have a pea-sized amount of thermal paste in the middle. Now make sure you remove the protective film. And look right here as I'm lowering it to make sure it's falling right onto the two points. And it did. So now I'm going to screw in one of them just so it can attach. Okay, that one has attached, but I did not fully tighten it. I want to make sure I secure the other one now first. And we're going to secure this one. So the reason why I make sure I attach both of them a little bit before fully screwing in is because if you fully tighten one first, it's going to be hard to secure it. Now let's secure the other end again. Let's screw it in a bit and rotate for even pressure. Screw that one in a little bit. And now let's finish off the other one. So I'm just going to keep screwing till it stops. There you go. You can't over tighten it. It stops you and it is good. We got to reattach the fans. I'm going to remove all the ties from the fan wires. I don't want these in 
here. Okay, so now for the first fan, we're gonna just clip it back on just like that with the metal things. Get that in there and the opposite side, get it in there. So it's in the position right where it's blowing air from the right side to the left side. Again, let's remove that tie, get it out of there. The deep cool sticker over here facing the left side and then the logo side is on the right side. That is the proper placement. So we're just gonna get this in all right and same thing clip it on both sides good so now i have over here the two cables from the two fans this cable here comes with it it's a splitter what this does is it lets you connect these two fans like this into then a single cpu fan header on your motherboard right here and that cpu fan header is right here it is labeled i'm gonna plug it in and there we go and it should look like that both of these fans are hooked up to the motherboard all right we're doing good next is the installation of our ram but we actually we have to remove this fan again because it is in our way there we go now we see our ram slots so we got our sticks so we're going to be installing our ram into the second and fourth ram slots so pull the levers back on the second and fourth one so you want to make sure that where the fan is indented that part is lined up with the part on the ram slot that's not indented line it up and get it into place and once it's in we push down with both thumbs equal force and those levers will clip back up. Same thing for the second stick get it into the fourth ram slot and push down both thumbs Boom, and it should look like that. Ram installed. Time to get this fan back on, guys. We already know how to do it. Next is the installation of our SSD. So this little guy. So we're gonna put our M.2 into here. We need to remove this heatsink first with a little zero screwdriver. All right, and now what we're going to do is put our M.2 right into there. Looks like that. And now for this part, we want to lift this up with our nail, that part right there. And now our M.2 can rest onto that. And we then push this back down to secure our M.2. And that's how it should look, look guys, easy. Now, before we put our heatsink back on, make sure you turn it around and remove the protective film. Now re-secure the heatsink. Done. Was that easy or was that easy? Now we're ready to install our motherboard inside of our case. Remove the back panel. All right, check it out. So when installing any motherboard inside of your case, you want to make sure all the points of the motherboard line up with the motherboard standoffs inside the case. This motherboard is the ATX form factor and the standoffs inside the case are already in the ATX layout. So we don't need to remove or add any standoffs. We're good to go. We're going to lay our case down. So now guys, we're going to put our motherboard inside. You can hold it from the heatsink and you want to line up the ports of the motherboard back here get that into place and then once that's in you can lay the motherboard flat and you want to line up the middle standoff right here with the motherboard there you go and the fan right here has a cable you want to make sure you don't get this cable right here of this fan stuck underneath the motherboard and have to plug that in later okay now the screws are in here we're going to be using this screw right here to secure the motherboard we're going to secure all nine points and then we'll go over them so first one right here in the middle All right, our motherboard's secure, let's review. So we secured one, two, three, four, five, six points right there. And at the top of our final three points, one, two, three. Now we're gonna install our power supply. Here's our fully modular power supply, power cable, screws to secure it. The power cables we need to plug into it. We're gonna hook up five cables to our power supply. First cable is the big 24 pin power cable. We're going to connect this end to our power supply on the left side right here. So in goes this part and the other one clips it on top. And that is our big 24 pin power cable connected. Next, we're going to hook up two cables that are labeled PCIe. This powers our graphics card. We're gonna hook up the other ends of these two cables. The end that says PSU to our power supply. Up here, this section is labeled PCI slash CPU. So we can plug them in in any of these four. In goes our first PCI and our second. Last two cables is our two CPU power cables. So they're labeled CPU, but we're going to hook up the ends of these two cables that say, once again, PSU on them. And these are gonna go right next to our two graphics card power cables, any of these three right here. And there we go, they are connected. Now I'm gonna hook up the optional power supply extensions. These are optional, but they're gonna look way better in the front of our build versus this, guys. That looks ugly, this is gonna look sick. So originally, this 24 pin part would have hooked up to the motherboard. Instead, it's gonna hook up to our extension. And now this is gonna hook up to the motherboard instead, and it's gonna look awesome. So next cable is for our graphics card. Remember, we don't wanna use this adapter because then this is gonna be on display in the front and it's gonna look really messy. We want this nice, clean, long cable. So this hooks up to the graphics card. The 
other end has our two PCI plugs. So we're gonna get one of our PCI Express cables that we hooked up to the power supply. We're gonna hook up this cable to the extension. And now let's get our second PCI Express cable from our conference card and hook it up to the other one. All right, and it should look like that, guys. Two PCI Express cables connecting to our extension. This hooks up to our graphics card. Now we're ready to put our power supply inside our case. So let's go ahead and turn this around. Our power supply is gonna go into here. When we're putting it in, make sure the fan of the power supply is facing down. And then we're gonna slide it right up in here and secure it with the four screws that it came with. These screws also come with the case. All right, guys, power supply installed. Now it's time to start hooking up cables. Don't worry, we're gonna take it one cable at a time. We break the cables down into three groups. First group of cables is all the power cables which power things from the power supply. Second group of cables is all our case cables which connect things like the power button and the USB ports up here to the motherboard. And then our third and final group of cables is all our fans and lighting. All right, starting off with the first group of cables, power supply cables. First power cable, our big 24 pin. We wanna make sure that this part right here flips back here, line it up straight, push it in all the way. Next power cable is our CPU power cable up here, top left of our build. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire the cables of our heatsink back here so it won't be so messy right there. So first CPU power cable, we wanna make sure that this part right here clips on the top of this. So again, line it up straight and push it in all the way it clips. All right, done with the first one. For the second one, we need to split it. So we simply just slide it off, break it into two. And now we're only gonna hook up this end. Line it up straight and push in all the way. And there we go, it's in. I'm gonna just put this other side in the back. And that's all our power cables for now. The last one is for our graphics card. That one's later. Moving on to our second group of cables, the case cables. So first case cable is our USB-C cable. It only goes in one way, right here. That's in. Now, right underneath it is where we're gonna hook up our USB 3 cable. This cable has a hump on one of the sides. We're gonna line up the hump right here. Line it up straight and then push it right in. Next, we're gonna hook up our JFP1 cables. So let's go ahead and get this tool that came with our motherboard. And here's our little JFP1 cables. They're all labeled. So we just need to hook up the JFP1 cables to this tool. The first is power LED. Here it is. So the plus is on top, minus on the bottom. So we're just gonna plug them in right here all the way. All right, so that's in. Right underneath, that is our power switch right here. This one, it doesn't matter what way you plug it in. There is no positive and negative. There we go, get it in there. Now let's turn this around. And right here is our reset switch, positive on top. So if we turn this around, we're gonna find an arrow right there. Arrow is the positive, so the arrow on top. I'm gonna plug it into here. And underneath that is our HD LED, positive on the bottom. Turn it around. You're gonna find the arrow. So you want the arrow on the bottom and then we plug it in. And there we go. Once we have everything plugged in, we're now going to plug it into here with all the cables on the left side and it's just gonna go right in. It should look like that. Done. And now last case cable, all the way to the bottom left of our motherboard. We're gonna hook up our HD audio cable. Only goes in one way, right here. And there we go. All right guys, and now our third and final group of cables, our fans and our lighting. So here we are in the back of our case. We need to undo this right here. This is is the two front fans of this case and the lighting of those two front fans. Okay, guys, so check it out. This cable is going to hook up both of the fans to the motherboard. The second cable is gonna hook up the lighting of these two fans to the motherboard. So let's flip it back around. And here we have the back fan. This one doesn't have any lighting. So this fan only has this single cable. So this end hooks up to a system fan header on our motherboard and it's actually right here. So I'm going to plug this in right there. It was like meant to be there because it barely has a enough length to reach there. And this is actually a chain system. Any fan that we hook up to this part of the cable immediately hooks up to the motherboard through here as well. So you guessed it. That's how we're gonna hook up the other two front fans of the case. Instead of me hooking up the two front fans of the case to the motherboard with another system fan header, I'm just gonna use the chain. There we go. Now all three fans are hooked up to the motherboard. I don't like how it's like that. It's honestly messy. I'm going to simply use a fan extension cable. I'll link this in the video description. So here's the fan extension cable. I'll link it in the video description and we simply hook this up to the fan. So now we can get the cable to the three fans back there and hook up the extension to the system fan header. Now all three fans are hooked up to our motherboard using an extension using the chain system. Now all that's left is the lighting of these two front fans. And here is that cable. We're going to hook it up to a three pin RGB header on our motherboard. Only goes in one way. It's right there. It's gonna hook it up. All right, cool. So that connects the lighting of those two front fans. Now the final part of our lighting is the RGB LED strip kit. We're gonna put one up here and one down there. These hook up to the motherboard. I'll go ahead and put a tutorial video in the description on how to install these, but I'm just gonna throw them in there real quick. 
Okay, the strips are in there. Look how clean. Perfect placement. And now we're finally ready to install our RTX 4070 Ti Super. Let's do it. We need to make room for it by removing the second and third brackets. All right, that's out of there. And now loosen this, pull it back. And now we're going to remove this. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna get our beautiful 4070 Ti Super. We're gonna line up this part with our PCI slot. Get it in there to line up straight and push it in all the way. Beautiful, it's in. Now we're going to secure it. Now we're gonna secure this piece. And now time to give our card juice. We're going to wire our cable through here and plug it in. Perfect. Now let's comb this cable. That is so much cleaner than if we were using the adapter. It would have looked so ugly right here. You can pick this cable up on our website, creatorhq.com. It's linked in the video description. Highly recommend it. This is how the adapter would look. It would literally just be hanging down there with the stock power supply cables just right here, all ugly spaghetti mess. All right, guys, if you were following along, congratulations, we are done. Now we're just gonna do the final touches. Cable manage the back, throw in the Funko Pop, put the panels back on and boot it up for the first time. All right, guys, let's get the lights off. I'm gonna plug the power in, and now first peel. This build looks clean. All right, guys, first boot up. Boom. GPU light is on, and all the lights are on. Everything's good. Fans are spinning. Awesome. This build came out really clean. I really like this build because the colorway, you know, like I said, most PC builds are just black or white. This one's sick. Green colorway. Mikey Funko Pop looks dope in there too. This case also, it just feels high quality. It's unique, has tons of airflow. This system came out super clean. RGB strips looking super clean in there too. Yeah, look at that. It's time to put this sexy build to the test. We're gonna soon frag it up in a bunch of current pop titles but first we need to install the operating system windows 11 from a usb flash drive a video on how to do that for free is linked in the video description you need to install your drivers to make sure everything's running good a video on how to do that is also linked in the video description every single part used for this build is linked in the video description all creator tees are currently on sale on creatorhq.com if you're looking for something else a different budget a different type of card check out the channel for all our past build guides we have a bunch of playlists where we organize all the build guides for you guys and now finally let's put this guy to the test Settings for Call of Duty Warzone 2, 1440p res, NVIDIA reflexes on on plus boost. For the quality settings, here they are. And for our view, max 120. Let's do it. No! Warzone performance is good. It's hitting 240 FPS at 1440p. That's amazing performance. All right, guys, settings for Fortnite, 1440p res. We have it on performance mode. Here are the rest of the settings. Epic, epic. Let's do it. Gotcha, boy. I just looked at the FPS, guys. Oh my. <laughs> We're playing at 1440p on performance mode. This is just so much FPS. You can play at whatever you want. Play at 8K. Look at this FPS, man. Oh my goodness, dude. He killed himself. How many people are left? 25 people. Huh? Bruh. What the? What are you aiming at? Oh my. Goodness, we're not in zone. Oh no! Oh my god, this thing sucks so much! You're a noob! No! Dude, what? Yo! Never use that rocket. Performance was crazy though. Next game. Settings for the finals. 1440p resolution. NVIDIA DLSS on quality. Max level will be at 100. Rest of the settings. Let's do it. Oh my god. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. 
Going for that 6,000, man. Oh my, oh no way, dude. Big three. Oh my goodness, dude. That was a major W. Let's go. Next game. Settings for Apex Legends. 4040p res. Max FOV. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Oh boy, you're my first kill. Thank you, sir. Now we're getting the hang of it. Who's next? I'm trying to get one more kill before it ends. Come on, one more. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Bruh. No! We won! <laughs> all right, that wasn't a challenge for our build at all. Apex ran amazing. Next game. Settings for PUBG. 1440p resolution. Here are the rest of the settings. FOV to the max. Let's do it. Oh my goodness, dude. Ambushed here. Fudge. Come on, show yourself. Yeah, we won. FPS was super high too, guys. All right, guys, next game. Settings for Halo Infinite. 90 FOV, 1440p res at 100% resolution scale. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Why did I get thrown into a match? I already started. And we lost that round. Bruh. I was brought into this lobby to secure the dub. Double kill. That's right. Oh, you lucky little warrior, man. No, 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 no. He thinks he's gonna live. Where are you going? The tie game now. This is our game, our victory. Come on, Obi guy, what happened? Obi guy, what happened? What happened? And you're dead, bye. Bruh. Yeah! That's right. All right, guys, performance was good for Halo Infinite for the settings we were running at. If you want to hit 240 FPS, just simply lower some settings in the resolution scale and you'll hit 240. GP utilization was super high, though, super good. Next game, settings for Counter-Strike 2, 4240p resolution, and here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Tons of FPS for Counter-Strike 2. We're in the high 300s. Bruh. Oh, Woo! Buzz! All right, performance is super good though. Counter-Strike 2 is super smooth. All right, let's get some MP5 action here. Nope. Or not. Uh. Oh, we got him! Oh. Oh, I missed. No! No school, boy! <laughs> All right, Counter-Strike 2 performed amazing. Next game. Settings for Rainbow Six Siege. 1440p res, 90 FOV. Here are the graphic settings. Let's do it. Nice. Where they have pulse. Bruh. No. Oh. That was awesome. Have shot bandit i literally looked at bandit instead of shooting him like nah because like i just make little holes anywhere hey, yo, what the oh fuck? maverick i was playing the game oh. Oh. bro i need to get in here for real Yeah, that's right. Ooh, we crossed that round. All right, overtime. Nah, no. What? Performance was amazing. I really wanted to win that one. That's a wrap for our RTX 4070 Ti super build. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.